Welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss about endometritis. As a continuation of our series, Infections of Individual Pelvic Organs. Endometritis is defined as the inflammation of the endometrium. Why does this inflammation occur? Normally, the endometrium will be protected from the infection by vaginal and cervical defense. The vagina will have a lactic acid secretion which maintains the vaginal pH between 4 to 4.5. Because of this acidic pH, any pathogenic bacteria like the gonococci, the infections like Trichomonas vaginalis, Candidia uh, species which will produce the bacterial vaginosis will be destroyed. And the cervical defense is produced by the cervical mucus which contains the lysosome which destroys any type of bacteria which is trying to cause an infection or the inflammation and also there is periodic shedding of the endometrium this periodic shedding will prevent any bacteria from overgrowing in the endometrium what happens during the childbearing period during the childbearing period this infection occurs in septic abortion or also in puparial sepsis and acute gonococcal infection so here they're talking about septic abortion during septic abortion there will be rupture of the membranes and because of the rupture of the membranes the infection and inflammation of the endometrium can occur puparial sepsis this is a inflammation of the endometrium which is occurring during any time between the labor and 42 days after the delivery that is the puparial period the sepsis which is occurring during the puparium is the puparial sepsis and the gonococcal infections these cause the endometritis the types of endometritis we have acute endometritis chronic endometritis and atrophic endometritis starting with acute endometritis Acute endometritis follows an acute cause like abortion in childbirth where the rupture of membranes can result in the inflammation. The common organisms which is producing this acute infection are the anaerobic streptococcus, non-hemolytic streptococcus and staphylococcus pyogenes. We also have the gram-negative bacteria like E. coli and the bacteroids group. As we previously mentioned, during the childbirth and abortion, the defense will be lost and malnutrition, the unhygienic environment during the delivery, dehydration, ketoacidosis during labor are the additional factors in the underprivileged, underprivileged women for endometritis. So guys, we have these causes, the unhygienic environments, dehydration, ketoacidosis resulting in endometritis. These are the positive factors for the endometritis. Infections are also common following the cesarean section, following the abortion which is specifically criminally induced. So when the patient criminally induces, it is a potentially virulent and exogenous infections are more likely to occur. The abortion, if has to be induced, should be done by a skilled person or a physician and it should be a medical termination of the pregnancy. The criminally induced can cause an exogenous infection and also the endometritis which is nothing but the inflammation of endometrium. The treatment for the acute endometritis on the outpatient basis we have Oflaxin 400 mg PO twice daily for 14 days and Oflaxin can also be given with metronidazole 500 mg PO again twice daily for 14 days. Patient is admitted to the inpatient therapy if there is no response by oflaxacin and metronidazole even after 14 uh, like if it is given and before the 72 hours if there is no response admit to the patient and then in for inpatient therapy these are the features to be present in the patient the temperature is more than 39 degrees celsius patient comes to the clinic with the clinical features of toxic look Lower abdominal guarding and rebound tenderness will be present. This 
Clindamycin 900mg IV8 Harley plus Gentamycin 2mg per kg of the patient IV then followed by 1.5mg per kg IV every 8 hours to be given. So followed by those uh, outpatient things, inpatient you have to give these two things that is Clindamycin and Gentamycin. It is given IV8 Harley. Then this clindamycin and gentamicin is followed by doxycycline 800 mg twice daily orally for 14 days. This is IV. These two clindamycin and gentamicin is given IV. Followed by this is followed by doxycycline 100 mg twice daily for 14 days. So these are tablets. Moving on, the IV fluids are given to correct the dehydration and the nasogastric suction is done in presence of abdominal distension. If the patient presents with abdominal distension or the ileus obstruction and then what happens, the nasogastric intubation is done so that the stomach and the bowels are at rest and can return to the normal size. Laprotomy is done if there is a clinical suggestion of the abscess rupture. Chronic endometritis. It is a chronic inflammation of the endometrium. The infection will gain foothold when there is a persistent source of infection in uterine cavity. If there is any infection which is present in the uterine cavity, it becomes a source this tumor or a polyp, any kind of infection which is present here, it will become a source of infection for the inflammation of the endometrium which is of a chronic type. Such conditions are intrauterine contraceptive devices, infected polyps, retained products of the misconception, uterine malignancy and endometrial burns due to the radiation exposure radium. So, any kind of infection or the pathology present in the endometrium can result in chronic endometritis. Associated with the polyps malignancies, we have the chronic inflammation of the endometrium. Tubercular endometritis is a chronic form in the beginning. So, this is a picture of the chronic tubercular endometrium. This tubercular endometrium can this tubercular endometrium it can result in the inflammation of the chronic inflammation of this endometrium or any sort of a polyp. So you can see this micro polyps which are associated with the chronic endometritis, and they have the accumulation of the inflammatory cells and the edema in the stroma of the endometrium. Women will present with the purulent and seropurulent vaginal discharge. So the clinical features what you can observe in a chronic endometritis is a seropurulent vaginal discharge. The diagnosis of a chronic endometriosis can be done by the cervical smear which you can see in the picture here. The cervical smear, the pap smear, culture of the discharge can be done to find out the causative organism and it can be treated accordingly transvaginal ultrasonography you can uh, rule out the uh, malignancy for polyps and so on and the histology of the endometrium to rule out the malignancy and you can see that chronic endometriosis can be figured out moving on to the treatment of chronic endometritis the offending cause to be removed like the cause like we saw the intrauterine contraceptive device or the polyp malignancy the cause has to be removed then the endometritis can be treated levofloxin 500 mg po daily again for 14 days with the metronidazole 5 400 mg po twice daily for again 14 days is given so we have in chronic inflammation we have levofloxin and metronidazole Moving on to the atrophic endometritis. So guys, the atrophic endometritis is also known as senile endometritis. 
after menopause the endometrium will lose the resistance and it will not be shed repeatedly it will gain the entrance uh, of this infection will gain the entrance into the uterus and it will present as a senile endometritis so what happens this defense will be lost there is no estrogen there is no shedding of endometrium the entire look of the endometrium feels like there is no endometrium at all now you can see in the picture here it is full of, full there is thickness of the myometrium and this endometrium it's so small thick very uh, small remnants of endometrium is seen very less lining is seen so it is feels like as if there is no endometrium at all okay now let us see this uh, normal endometrium and the senile endometrium to understand what is the change happening here so this is a normal endometrium what happens in a normal endometrium this endometrial thickness is about 5 to 6 mm now guys you can see here this endometrial the this is the endometrial thickness it is about 5 to 6 mm and then you can see the numerous glands which are present here relative to the stroma and then the continuation is that of the myometrium the entire layer is of the myometrium more uh, thickness myometrial thickness will be there and glands relative to the stroma is more now when you see the uh, senile endometrium an atrophied senile endometrium what happens in this during the senile endometrium the entire look feels as if the full it is of uh, myometrium there is no endometrium at all more full completely it is endomet myometrium and when you take a closer view you can see that the prolonged because of the prolonged estrogen withdrawal the remnants of scanty remnants of the endometrium is seen there is scanty glands compared to the stroma you can see this the scanty glands and the stroma very few remnants of the endometrium which are present here so everything is changing in the menopause after the menopause it is because of the withdrawal of the estrogen following the menopause due to the deficiency of estrogen the defense of the uterocervical vaginal canal is lost there is no periodic shedding of endometrium as a result what happens organisms of a low virulence even though they are not highly virulent even if they are low virulent they can ascend up to infect the atrophic endometrium there is intense infiltration of the endometrium with the polymorphonuclear leukocytes and plasma cells so you can see here uh, these uh, because of this inflammation then what happens the polymorphonuclear leukocytes since it is of a chronic type the leukocytes come into play and then we also have the plasma cells this endometrium after the inflammation will become ulcerated and this uh, tissue is being replaced by the granulation tissue okay the ulcered places after healing it is replaced by the granulation tissue the purulent discharge which is either uh, escaping out of the uterine cavity or it can pent up inside which is producing a pyometra so you can see the picture of the pyometra here the mucus uh, sorry the purulent pus which is collected in the uterus clinical features postmenopausal women will complain of vaginal discharge at times the vaginal discharge will be offensive or it can even be blood stain the pelvic examination will reveal the features of atrophic vaginitis so if, along with the atrophic endometrium uh, the entire endometrium cervix and the vagina is going to be atrophied so you can see this atrophied vaginal tissue once the estrogen is lost so you can see in the picture here before the epithelium was sick uh, sorry thick it was healthy full of estrogen whereas uh, after the menopause the estrogen is lost the epithelium will become very thin and dry the glands are lost it is very less and the endometrium lining itself will be lost and this is about the vagina the thickness again in vagina is lost it has become thin and dry the purulent discharge if it is escaping out through the cervix you can see it or it can pent up in the form of pyometra if there is pyometra the uterus will be enlarged it feels soft and tender how do you diagnose the atrophic endometritis the atrophic endometritis the diagnosis is confused with the carcinoma of the endometrium 
this carcinoma of the endometrium should be excluded prior to the treatment so that you do not give a wrong treatment you have to exclude the malignancy in fact the pyometra may be present both in atrophic endometritis and endometrial carcinoma the ultrasonography will be helpful to diagnose whether if it is a chronic inflammation of the endometrium if there is a chronic inflammation of the endometrium or there is pus accumulation or a malignancy this is pus accumulation is nothing but the pyometra or there is a malignancy Diagnostic curative should be done and the endometrium is subjected to this histological examination. Now you can see the diagnostic curative, dilatation and curative and you are taking this endometrial tissue and doing the histological examination and ruling out if it is uh, malignancy or chronic uh, endometri atrophic endometritis. If however the pyometra is present, if pyometra is seen, the drainage of the pus should be done by a simple dilatation and then uh, you can just give an incision and you can remove the pus dilatation and then uh, incision and drainage should be done here. After 1 to 2 weeks, the diagnostic curatage is done under the cover of the antibiotics. After performing, after uh, giving an incision, removing the pus, again perform this DNC and take the histological examination of the tissue. Once pyometra is done, now you have to see the histological examination how do you treat this atrophic or senile endometritis in the postmenopausal women if the woman is with the recurrent attacks since she is an old age woman hysterectomy should be done okay uh, now she is old age so hysterectomy can be performed so with this we come to an end of all the three types of endometritis i hope everything is clear if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe